The dismantling of the communist system created a power vacuum that Boris Yeltsin was determined to fill. As the Russian president, he banned the Soviet Communist Party, the last thing Gorbachev would ever have contemplated. This was the beginning of another revolution. Gorbachev tried to make room for public debate in the party. But if we acknowledge that it's a positive thing, we don't think about the basic question, whether a party like that should exist at all. And that was the big question which he couldn't afford to confront. Gorbachev had always believed he could carry out his reforms from within the Communist Party, but the coup proved this was an illusion. Within days of the August revolt, Lenin's USSR began to fall apart. Lenin was very wrong when he cut our Russian empire into national units. Ukraine, Belarusia, Kazakhstan, you name it. These were the places where national party elite decided to go it alone, decided to keep all the riches, so to say, and the power to themselves. So the Soviet Union started to be disassembled. Bowing to the new realities, Mikhail Gorbachev found himself working with Boris Yeltsin to persuade the Soviet Congress to vote the USSR out of existence and replace it with a looser union giving real independence to the Soviet republics. On the 12th of December 1991, at the press of a button, the Soviet Union was brought to an end. The People's Deputies returned to their republics to run their own affairs. Gorbachev clung to the hope that he'd chair a new central council with control of the wider economy and the military. But Boris Yeltsin had other plans. He met the leaders of the Ukraine and Belarus, two of the biggest republics, and got their agreement to form a completely new alliance of states. Within this alliance, the republics would look after their own affairs with no interference from Moscow. By the 21st of December, eight more republics had signed up to Yeltsin's alliance, the Commonwealth of Independent States. Yeltsin was now in the driving seat as president of the wealthiest republic, a first among equals. Gorbachev was powerless, president in name only. Yeltsin had pulled the carpet from under him. On Christmas Day 1991, Mikhail Gorbachev resigned from his post as president of the now defunct USSR. For the last time, the hammer and sickle flag was lowered on the roof of the Kremlin to be replaced by the flag of the new Russian Republic. And with that, the Soviet Union passed into history. In generations to come, history will judge Gorbachev extremely favorably because all these details we're discussing now will be forgotten. But the main thing will remain that he changed the Soviet Union from one system to another. He returned Russia to democracy, to the West, to the civilized world. Gorbachev's time in power brought the end of the Cold War and the lifting of an oppressive system from the backs of the citizens of the USSR. But in his own terms, he was a failure. He was unable to reform the Communist Party from within. The hardliners saw to that. His attempts to improve life for the Soviet people also failed. Gorbachev wanted a slow and gradual move away from a centrally planned communist system towards a free market economy. That was his undoing. By 1992, the transformation of the former communist USSR into a commonwealth of capitalist states had begun in earnest. In a period of just six years, the ideas that had been supposed to reinvent the Soviet Union, Glasnost and Perestroika, had instead brought it to an end, and with it, the career of Mikhail Gorbachev. The future of the new Russia now lay in the hands of Boris Yeltsin.